So if someone were to tell you that they had a box, it was a magic box that you could put any generic fire inside of, and the fire would get many times taller and would actually turn into this fire tornado, you'd probably say that they were crazy. However, I have one of those boxes sitting right there. So first we need the generic fire. Now, this is pretty simple. It's got uh, cotton balls in a tin can, and I'm going to soak them in lighter fluid. Make sure there's not any on my hands. <laughs> Here we go. We have a generic fire. Now, you can see that it's maybe eh, six or seven inches tall. It's a bit more when the wind gusts up. I just put it out. Stifle it. Maybe stifle it. <laughs> now, saw that it was only that big. If I relight it, it's no larger. It's the same thing. It's not like it does something special to it by turning it off. However, when I take that fire and I put it in this box, which has nice plexiglass walls so that we can see right through it, it does this. fire gets three or four times taller, starts rotating, and looks really, really cool. So that's the fire tornado. You may have seen the, the video where some guys get a whole bunch of box fans and point them at a bonfire at just the right angle and they get this huge pillar of flame. Um, I want to be able to do something similar to that but on a slightly smaller and safer scale. So this is what I ended up with. Now, there's this went through lots of iterations, and there are ways to do it with fans and powered blowers and things like that, but what I ended up with is actually a completely passive design. Um, it was a combination of things that I found out through prototyping and videos that I watched, so I'll, I'll link a couple of those in the uh, description here. But to make a fire tornado like this, it's really a fire vortex. You need to understand how a vortex forms. And uh, just like a real tornado that you see in storms, uh, it's got two elements. It's got rotation, clearly, and an updraft. And the, the updraft is something that you don't normally see, but uh, both of those are necessary to form a vortex, and both are actually present in this design, or else it wouldn't work. So the trick about making a passive fire tornado is that you can't cheat and add extra energy to the system with fans or anything else that would like blow on the air and force it to rotate into a column or something like that. All of the energy for both elements of the vortex, the updraft and the rotation, have to come from the fire itself. Now, we know that fires are really good at making updrafts. All they do is heat air, so hot air is less dense than cold air, which means that the hot air is going to rise. It's just how a hot air balloon works, except we're not putting a balloon over the top, so the air just goes up. Now, if we actually light a fire here, the uh, shape of the flame gives us some indicator of what's going on. You can see, well, you really can't see because there's wind, but what a fire typically does is come to, individual flames will come to a point at the top, and that means that there is air moving up, but the trick is where that air is coming from, because you can't just shoot air out of the fire. There's not a compressed gas bottle in there that's just shooting out compressed air. The air has to also be entering the fire. So in a fire like this, air is actually entering from all sides almost horizontally. So any individual air particle is going to be moving towards the fire, it's going to reach the fire, and then it's actually going to be heated and move up. So fires aren't just making an updraft, they're actually doing two things. They are drawing air towards themselves and then heating that air and making the updraft. So you get that flame shape up to a point. Now, because fire is not only making an updraft, we can now also trick it into making the rotation for us. Uh, that drawing air in towards it, you can make it draw that air not straight in, but at angles. And if you can force the air to be drawn towards the fire at an angle, 
and not just straight towards the middle, then you can trick the fire into making itself rotate. And that's exactly what that tornado machine does. So I'm gonna show you how that works. Before I get into the details of how this thing is built, I'll start by saying that it is dangerous and don't co uh, complain to me if you light anything on fire. Now, that being said, it is uh, very possible to do many dangerous things safely if you're careful, and uh, this is no exception. Note that I'm lighting this in a uh, gravel parking lot with a concrete wall behind me, and I have a thing of water sitting right here ready to put it out it should the need arise. Now, basically, this is two plywood hexagons. That's the top, and this is the bottom. And uh, they are held one 2x4 width apart, and uh, the walls are actually made of these sheets of uh, polycarbonate. And one that's so that you can see through it, but two it makes it adjustable so that you can actually slide these things in and out. As I said, we need to force the fire to rotate, and if I were to put, if I were to close all of these off, and make it a perfect hexagon, there would be no gaps for the fire to rotate. And if I were to make a hexagon with just the corners cut out, air would just rush straight in towards the middle. So you actually need to pull these panels out a little bit so that they're offset, so that air can go in that way, and air can go in that way, and air can go in this way. And all of the air that's entering the box is actually already rotating just because it has entered the box. So. All these pieces of plex are just held up by some 2x4s, which makes it nice and adjustable and easy to play with. The, uh, the fire in the center is in this can, I think it came from a container of mandarin oranges or something, a soup can, anything will work. And uh, I actually have some foil in the bottom of this to make the, uh, the cotton balls a little closer to the surface, because I found that that helps the airflow. Now, it's a pretty simple construction and I actually went through like three days of cardboard models trying to make this exact passive design work and ending with a, a full-scale one-to-one model to make sure that I wasn't going to waste my money on all the polycarb uh, before I built this. So it's actually very easy to throw together a cardboard one of these, although then you have to be even more careful and keep even more water nearby if something were to go wrong. So uh, that's basically it. But I think the really cool part about this project is that when you put a fire in the box, it actually amplifies the fire. It releases much more light and much more heat than if the fire were outside of the box and not forming a vortex. Now, I haven't read any explanations as to why this may happen. There are fire tornadoes that naturally occur during wildfires and stuff like that. But I'm going to explain what I think is happening to the best of my knowledge. So first, I want to talk about the rotation. Clearly, there's rotating air in this box, or else it wouldn't do the tornado. But uh, what we need to do is determine what it is about that rotation that is making the fire burn so much larger. Now, I want you to picture one of the big science fiction space stations, the big round thing that's always spinning, and uh, supposedly they feel artificial gravity because they're standing in it, and they feel like gravity is pointing out in all directions, and that up is actually the middle of the space station, the center of rotation. Now, this is a completely scientifically valid thing to build, although no one's actually built one yet. You would, in fact, feel that up was towards the middle of the rotation. So, in this case, up is still the middle of rotation. Now, I said earlier that hot air rises, but in this case, hot air is actually going to move towards the center of the cylinder here the cylinder of rotating air, which means that you're going to get a pillar of hot gas that rises through the middle of the entire box. Now what that does is by concentrating all of that hot air, it means that you're going to achieve much higher temperatures in the middle. And when you burn fuel at really high temperatures, you burn that fuel more efficiently. And by burning it more efficiently, you're releasing more energy for the same amount of fuel, which means that we're going to be getting substantially more heat and light out of the fire just because we're burning it and getting more energy from the same amount of fuel. The second element is uh, insulation and I think 
This one's a little sketchier, but I believe that by concentrating all the hot air in the middle, you are decreasing the amount of energy that that column of air loses due to heat. Um, when you've got hot air from a fire, it's really hot. It's got a lot of extra energy and it's trying to get rid of that energy. It can do that in two different ways. One, by basically having molecules run into other molecules and transfer heat just through motion. So that means that the hot column of gas is going to be spreading its heat out into the rest of the gas and just making everything warmer. The second method that it can get rid of energy by is light. Every time it emits light, it emits a little bit of energy and it loses that energy and it's happy because it's trying to become the same energy as everything else, basically. And when you are preventing the heat flow from happening, it means that the system has more time to emit light. You can't really speed up its emission of light. I mean, there are certain things like lasers that do that, but this is not one of those things. So basically assume that the same amount of light is leaving the pillar of hot gas at all times. So if you can maintain the temperature of that pillar for longer, then it's going to release more energy as light. So because the hot gas is rising, we basically see that as a taller flame because as the air is rising, it's cooling and cooling and cooling, and at some point it reaches a temperature where it's not going to emit light anymore. And if we can slow down its cooling such that it hits that temperature when it's all the way up here instead of all the way down here, then you end with a apparently much larger flame. And uh, to my knowledge, the combination of a more efficient burn and a larger fraction of the emitted energy being emitted as light are the two uh, key factors that make the fire tornado uh, act as a fire tornado and not just a small fire in a cup. So behind every fun toy there's probably a lot more substantially more fun physics. <laughs>